Hello, thank you for tuning in to BBC Radio Manchester, 95.1 FM, digital and online. I'm Dilo. It's now the 11th of November and a warm welcome to you for joining us. On today's lineup, we have a chat and music from a Taiwanese music producer, Jess Yang, the final instalment to the BBC Witness in China series from Rebecca Jones, and also a very interesting conversation about developments in Manchester and China with Manchester China Forum's Rebecca Drakeford. All that's coming up after Uptown Funk, produced by Jess Yang, Toy San Bo Bei Ngo.
such funky music there. I love the fusion of Western and Oriental mix. You are listening to Eastern Horizon on BBC Radio Manchester, 95.1 FM, digital and online, with me, D Lo. That was a production of Jess Yang, who is a music producer originally from Taiwan. He is now based in London. He came to Manchester especially just to talk to us here at Eastern Horizon. I asked him, how did he first begin his music career? Well, I began actually at the first time I was in high school, I was 16. I was just playing in a band as a guitarist with a couple of friends and uh, somehow away and we managed to have uh, to play like a street performer in, in Taipei while we were still I was 15 years old, I think. And we were discovered by them by the manager from the label company. Wow. And we were signed. That's it. <laughs> that's <laughs> amazing. A, that's everybody's a, dream. Yeah, that's a lot. I, was, I was living a dream when I was a kid. I have to admit that I got a really good opportunity and work in the biggest label company in Taiwan when I was a kid as an artist. That's right. how I started my career in music, honest, okay. honestly. Okay. Yeah. So you, did you, does that mean that you didn't really study music in as a subject at school or anything? No, not until now. Not until I come to London because I'm taking course now in London. Yeah, this is the first time I take actually like proper education in music. Oh wow! Until now, yeah, I've never been taught before in any kind of like proper education or any music before ever. So basically, you're a natural musician. No, no, no. I just practice. <laughs> I, I practice a lot. I have to say, I practice a lot, and I have asked a lot of, because I have been working with a lot of like producers and in the studios while I was in the label company. So I know this kind of people. Like when I got questions, I got to ask them. So it's a kind of a big benefit for me. Yeah. Right. I see. And so let's see what you're working on currently. Then. Yeah, I was working on the project that I was. Uh, working on now is Mel Taiwan. Yeah, it's the biggest project for me now because I think it's really interesting. We can like, combine all kind of traditional Taiwanese culture, religions, and uh, this kind of things together with modern pop culture. It's kind of interesting and. So is that what Mel Taiwan is then? Yeah, it, it is. Basically, we're just the concept is really simple about Mel Taiwan. Mel Taiwan because it's just like we're trying to tell everybody about our culture. Like everybody knows about our culture by hiding under the skin of modern. Western pop music, yeah, that's how we how how we do that. Right. So is it like a, a fusion of British, not not British, but Western and Western pop? Yeah. That is the fusion of like Western uh, electronic music with like Eastern traditional uh, instruments and sounds. And uh, it's just about music. We, we we do it as as a like a music video thing. So we got a re- filming crew like uh, filming about like uh, the temples in Taiwan and the sculptures of the gods in Taiwan, the sculpt, uh, other festivals, the things we do, the ceremonies we do in Taiwan, and put it like a music video and put it with the music together to let people get more opportunity to see what we're actually doing, not just only music. Right, that, yeah. that's very interesting because it's, it's showing, uh, it's giving more awareness to the different aspects in Taiwan. Yeah, of course, because I think like a Chinese culture or like Eastern culture is like 5,000 years and there's a big gap of language and people don't really have the opportunity to understand about the stories, the histories, and everything's about we, everything's we do, and the reason why about our festival ceremonies, all these kind of things, kind of a pity. So I want to let people know what we're actually doing, that why we are doing this. Okay, so yeah. let me ask you, why are you doing this? Because I love it. Because I think it's interesting. <laughs> I think it's kind of a shame people don't know about all the stories that we know about the Chinese history and about ceremonies. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful about the, about the religious. About basically, I don't know much about uh, my own culture until I do this project. Basically, so it's part self development, yeah, self learning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because self- we partner up with a lot of like traditional artists. They are like sculptors, like costume designers. They got dramas. They got drama performers and uh, like traditional instrument performance and I learned a lot of the things that I should have known because I'm an Asian, I'm a Taiwanese, I'm a Chinese. It's things that I should have known but I, I have no idea before. Until now I do this project I have known a lot of things that I don't know before. And uh, does that mean because you were in a position where you didn't know before that you would like to share that with other yeah, people? Yeah, as yeah, yeah. Well? I was actually like learning a lot of things during this project. It's been an year now, exactly one year about this project. I've been learning a lot, and I would like to let lots of more people. It, it basically, it's kind of sad now because you know ta- Taiwan people, we speak Taiwanese. And nowadays, less and less people are actually speaking Taiwanese. They oh. only speak Mandarin. Even more people speaking English. Two of my younger sisters doesn't really speak Mandarin, uh, Taiwanese now. 
At all. No, yeah. It's oh. kind of sad, isn't it? It is, actually. Yeah. I know lots of people, especially in Taipei, actually, in Taipei, this kind of city, is, there's is more and more people speaking English than speaking Taiwanese. Hey, I think I'll find it easy to move to Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, no problem. <laughs> Let's take a break from the interview with Jess and have a listen to another piece of his work. This piece is called Faded. Yan Gan Mai Zhao. Another brilliantly fused piece by Jess Yang there, Taiwanese music producer, who is based in London. You're tuned in to BBC Radio Manchester, 95.1 FM digital and online. And the programme is Eastern Horizon with me, D-Lo. Thank you for tuning in. Earlier, I was talking to Jess Yang, the music producer who pulls together Eastern vibes with Western music, exhibiting a lovely fusion sound, as you heard earlier. The project is called the Mao Taiwan Project. So I asked him, what interesting things has Jess discovered whilst he has been working on this project? 
I think the most interesting thing is like the thing is just like I said before is that about like cooperating with traditional artists. They have known about like they are they are kind of precious of Taiwanese culture actually because they know lots of things that people should have known. Like while we were kids, we got like, several kind of different ceremonies. We do lots of things during festivals and we don't know why. It's just like our parents tell us to, our grandparents tell us to. And through these kind of projects, I finally gradually know why we're doing this. There's a history behind this, there's a reason behind this, there's a story behind this. So how do you actually depict those stories then in, form, in the form of music? How does that happen? Well, basically, we haven't gone that far. Basically, we're t- telling the stories by the, by the videos, by the visions, and I'm just making the music. But this is the starting point, actually. This, this project is just starting, and it's got a long way to go. So it's still got a lot of things to be worked. So it's still in progress, then? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, OK. So if you've not done it yet, how do you intend to do it? Well, first of all, I'm going to release an open of the project really soon, lately, and uh, the, the album of the, the little booklet inside will be talking about all the kind of the gods, uh, the ceremonies, the festivals, and this, um, all these kind of cultural things that we'll ha- we have mentioned about during uh, each episode of Mail Taiwan. We will like talk about everything and uh, in the in the album descriptions so that we can let the people from a different culture knows what we're talking about and what was they looking at during the music video right yeah okay and besides Miao Taiwan is there any other projects that you're working on uh, well of course I've been doing production for other people for a long time but basically I just doing jobs for others and I'm actually planning to release my own music after Miao Taiwan's album of course yeah that's my oh. biggest purpose actually Okay, so yeah. so that's your next step towards yeah, 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 making yeah, your dream yeah, come yeah. true. But still, but still, I'm also kind of guy making this kind of oriental sound, like traditional music. I really like oriental traditional instruments and tr- traditional music. So I'm probably doing, going to do the same, this kind of music, which I call it like oriental electronic music. How do you produce that? <laughs> Um, that's just like I did to Mel Taiwan. I do like electronic music and put oriental traditional instruments to sounds inside. And I found like really good musicians there, like professional traditional uh, oriental musicians to help right. me. And we cooperate together. And these musicians, are they based in Taiwan or England? Yeah, they're all based in Taiwan. So oh. I, got a, I got a studio crew in Taiwan and got a video crew in Taiwan so we can do this like simultaneously in the different side of the world. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how does that happen yeah, when you're based here? Yeah, it's kind of hard, here? I have to say, because of the time and the jet lag kind of thing, different time zone. But it's kind of fun that we can... I, I've met a lot of like, different kind of people in UK as well and they are also really interested in like Oriental culture. Yes. Uh, I got lots of people actually helping me a lot and I appreciate appreciate them a lot especially you like they invited me to my <laughs> to, to the radio show it's real one of them yeah Thank so you. it's kind of fun to have like a different kind of people cooperating together helping you like doing one doing the same thing like helping your own culture to be seen to be heard by other people yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely with the team being in Taiwan and you based in the UK yeah do you fly back often to actually work alongside them or do you just kind of like do it on a remote basis? Uh, well, basically we got like a different guy doing different kind of things. So I pro- bo- most of the time just doing music. And uh, nowadays it's a digital time. You can make music any way you want. You just need a laptop and a good sense of music and you can communicate with the performers in the studio. You tell them what to do, write down the scores and you tell them what to do. It should be easy. It's a well, you make it sound easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's, of course you're gonna gonna have like, lots of different kind of difficulties at the beginning, but just mm. try to solve it. So, what kind of difficulties have you come across then during this project? Well, the first time is about like communicating with traditional artists. This is the biggest problem of Mel Taiwan for so far, basically, because they got they had no idea what we are going to do. They don't they don't really know what we're doing. They haven't seen of. Our, our pieces yet so they have like doubts they, they, they don't trust us so sometimes because you can see a lot of vis- music videos like we were shooting in temples and we're shooting the sculptures of the god in the temples it's almost impossible because they're already gods because in Taiwanese believe god is really like uh, very holy we don't really touch them we don't we don't like film them or something 
So it's really hard to communicate with them at the beginning. So it takes a lot of effort. We have to talk to them. We have to tell them what we're doing. We have to show them what we're well, well, trying to do, so they can gradually understand us. So they're willing to give us their power to help us to make this thing happen. It's the most difficult part. And I'll you've overcome say. that then by continually talking yeah, to them. Yeah, <laughs> being annoying. <laughs> continually being annoying. <laughs> well, sometimes to get what you want and to get the message through, yeah. it takes a lot to convince other people sometimes. Yeah. So I guess that's the kind of experience that you've been yeah, having. I'm then. glad that eventually people were willing to help us to cooperate. I'm really glad that still we're still working this on. I didn't imagine that this thing would go that far, to be honest. Yeah, Because it's just like... We didn't get paid anything. No one got paid during this project. We're just doing this because we we both believe that our culture needs to be preserved. So that's why we're doing this. It's just kind of great. I like this kind of feeling and working this with these kind of people. It's always really warm. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. That's all I'm going to ask, actually. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, we're going to release a new song really soon. And we're coming with a new album. And uh, if you want to support us, it's the pretty easy the easiest way is to let's like, support our album yeah if and if you want to support a, a sponsor us of course <laughs> just contact us and we will find us on uh, taiwan temple run actually it's uh, our full name is taiwan temple run it's kind of cute isn't it <laughs> <laughs> taiwan temple run yeah the temple is like the bpm temple t-e-m-p-o yeah, yeah, TM Taiwan Temple Run, Mail okay. Taiwan. You can find us to connect if you've got any questions or any things you could suggest to us. So I'll be glad to hear about it. That was Jess Yang telling us about his project where he mixes Eastern and Western music, which, if I may say so, sounds absolutely amazing. And just so you know, the single called Closer, Teen Ngai Ji is due for release. And here it is broadcast for the first time here on Eastern Horizon BBC Radio Manchester. Hey, I was doing just fine before I met you I drank too much and that's an issue, but I'm okay Hey, you tell your friends it was nice to meet them But I never want to see them again Down car and four years, no calls, and now you're looking pretty in a hotel bar. And I, I, I can't stop. No, I, I, I can't stop. So
That was a remix from Jess Yang, who we were talking to earlier here on Eastern Horizon. You are tuned in to BBC Radio Manchester, 95.1 FM, digital and online. I'm D-Lo. Thank you for joining us.